15 Things You Didn't Know About Running a Fast Food Business Welcome to ALUX.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello ALUXers and welcome back to our channel. Today we're bringing you something a little different. Are you good at cooking? Have you ever dreamed of being a chef or running your own restaurant? Maybe someday? Or maybe you want to take a step back and do something less pretentious, like running a fast food business. If you've already started looking at tips and tricks for opening your own fast food restaurant, you're in the right place. With revenues of $110 billion each year and 50 million clients per day, the U.S. fast food industry is thriving and shows no sign of slowing down. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at ALUX. The 15 things you didn't know about running a fast food business. Let's dive in! Number 1. Always try to open in a crowded location, like malls, universities, touristy places, or metro stations. Do you remember where the last time you ordered some fried food was? Chances are it wasn't in the middle of nowhere or hidden in a cool location. That's because it's all about location, location, location. We can't stress that enough because it's so true. Fast food owners usually go by the rule of thumb that you have to open a restaurant on busy streets, near tourist attractions, in shopping centers, by highways, and why not, near universities, schools, or other places where there's a lot of traffic. Even if you're competing with others in a food court, it's still better to be in a mall than some other location. So be aware of that before signing your leasing contract. Number 2. Health regulations need to be taken into consideration at all times. There's nothing worse than spoiled fast food. Ask any restaurant owner and they'll tell you that federal and state regulations are the worst. But they're there for a reason. You can't just put people's health at risk, and we actually are very sure that it's not your intention. So before you even start thinking of opening, you have to verify which are the rules for each state you're in, usually by checking with your State Department of Licensing and Regulations to see what you need to comply with. Plus, there's the U.S. Food and Drug Administration health code regulations, which might not be the coolest read ever, but it could save you from failure before taking any steps into opening your restaurant. Number 3. You don't need to have the classic fast food dishes in your restaurant. Hamburger, cheeseburger, a side of fries, a soda, and that's it. Well, not really. While there is nothing wrong with the classic fast food options, you can certainly offer something more varied than that. Actually, people want more varied dishes, like to have low-calorie options, and a lot of people choose restaurants that use fresh ingredients. So you can try to spice things up and offer more healthy options that can be done in an instant. Or there are seafood fast food chains if that's your thing. Take Long John Silver's and Captain D's, for example. Don't forget that you can also do your own market research first to see what people in your area actually want to eat. Number 4. If you don't buy a franchise, you need to come up with a good serving system. There is a reason why people choose fast food, and that's because it's quick and easy. Chain restaurants have mastered the art of serving efficiently, but especially at the beginning, you might struggle with this aspect. You have to be able to serve all the dishes on your menu and get them ready in a matter of minutes. That's relatively easy to do if you make sure to use some or most of the ingredients into more than a few items on your menu, and know exactly what to do step by step after a customer orders. Trained employees are happy employees and make even happier clients. They can also work more independently and work efficiently as part of a team. Number 5. A food truck can be a lifestyle of traveling and cooking. If you've ever dreamed of owning a restaurant but don't want to spend all of your time in one place, why not get a food truck? Food trucks are basically restaurants on wheels, have to respect the same health codes, but don't have as many employees. Plus, think of all the money you could save on rent. People seem to love them, whether it's ice cream trucks, frozen foods, or fresh food that's made on the spot. However, a big downside can be the colder weather, when people aren't as happy to queue up in the snow or heavy rain, and your sales could take a serious plunge. But then again, you can move somewhere else, so it's a win-win. Number 6. 
Marketing helps you bring in new clients and promote offers. There's a reason why fast food chains are literally everywhere, and that's because it's just their marketing strategy. That's how they manage to get their brand seen and recognized globally. Think about it. About three new McDonald's open every single day. Fast food chains need to also be super accessible for people, and it shouldn't take you long to get one in your city. That's why there's no problem if there are two, three, or more branches in a single town. Of course, competitors see that as they open restaurants as well, not wanting to be pushed out of the market, and the cycle goes on and on. Number 7. Offering more than minimum wage can bring you better employees. Fast food chains have pretty high employee turnover rates, and let's be real, it's not the most glamorous job or one that society values a lot, but that doesn't mean that you can't get or shouldn't keep your employees hired for longer periods and most importantly that you shouldn't pay a good salary. For starters, hire good people that can work independently and that you can trust to do their jobs efficiently. Secondly, train them to be aware that having a good team on your side is priceless. And thirdly, pay them well and pay them above market rates. Unfortunately, many employers fall into the trap of hiring the wrong people for minimum wage jobs that end up costing more since they make many mistakes or leave early. Number 8. Food spoils easily, and that means less profit for you. Yes, you can have some things frozen and can stretch the shelf life for some ingredients, but at the end of the day, you have to serve pretty qualitative food to keep things going. Costs with food are tricky, since recipes have to be followed accordingly and ingredients to be properly measured. For example, if cooks regularly use two tomatoes instead of one for each portion, even though the recipe says just one, you'll have to use more tomatoes and that means buying more tomatoes. That's why employees should be properly trained and have adequate materials at hand in the kitchen to follow the instructions. Number 9. Creating the menu can be in your favor if you're smart about it. This has to be the most exciting and yet the most difficult part. We're talking about creating your menu, of course. Keep in mind, you might want to do lots of things, but there's the bottom line to consider. Step 1 is to combine ingredients so that many dishes can use them, such as eggs, chicken, but also vegetables, for example. Step 2 is to buy in bulk because there are better prices for bulk items, and since you've combined them wisely, they are also less likely to spoil since you're going to use them all. Step 3 is to keep in mind that food does spoil easily, but there are many waste-reducing techniques that restaurants use to make sure their bottom line isn't going to be affected. Number 10. Listen to what your customers want and order. Here's a story for you. One guy eats the same chicken soup at the same restaurant each day for one year. One day he goes in, orders, and soon finds out that he was the only one who ordered the dish, so they had to let it go. Creating your menu shouldn't be sentimental or about one customer. It should be about your best-selling products, the ones that bring in the most cold hard cash. For that, you have to constantly improve your best-selling dishes, make them easy to serve, and give people what they want, or rather, what most of them want. Plus, it's great to be known as the best place to eat hamburgers in town than that place who has many average options. And since we're talking about food, make sure to watch our 15 things you didn't know about the food industry to get a better insight on the matter. Number 11. Depending on the country you're in, the menu will have to adapt. As you grow, your market reach will grow as well. Sure, if you go from one state to another, especially if it's the neighboring state, you might not need to change your menu too much. However, branching out into a whole other country is a different story. Take, for example, KFC, who adapts really well to what clients want. In Japan, they're pretty popular and serve local things such as dark meat, use rice bowls, and even have home delivery. In India, they have different vegetarian options such as veg zinger or potato crisper burger, since around 42% of Indian families are vegetarian. Number 12. Customers can be very rude or whiny, so be prepared. 
You'll have to grow a thick skin if you want to get into this industry. Hungry people are cranky and impatient, and being hangry is a real thing. Changing orders, talking loudly, talking on the phone while ordering at the same time, and so many more examples. Sure, that hardly justifies bad behavior, yet unfortunately you can't avoid these people. So, it's better to be prepared and make sure that it doesn't take you completely by surprise. You can also instruct your staff to be aware of this and act accordingly, especially if the other customers are bothered by it as well. And at the end of the day, remember that there will also be nice and appreciative clients out there, so there's a silver lining. Number 13. It's hard to find good employees that will stick with you. Hiring in this industry is pretty hard and the earlier you're aware of this, the better. Most big fast food corporations offer benefit plans as an incentive for prospective candidates as the demand for workers continues to increase. It's mostly because a more healthy economy means more opportunities for people, so benefits just don't cut it anymore when they can find something better. In 2015, job seeker interest in the fast food industry dropped by 50% compared to employers' demands. So be prepared to be extra careful when you hire people, prepare for departures, and make sure to offer an attractive salary and or benefits. Number 14. Profit is made by selling more products and minimizing waste. We already mentioned how you have to choose your menu wisely, create recipes that use basic ingredients that can be bought in bulk, and the fact you need to minimize waste to maximize profits. So you might be wondering, how do some restaurants make money by selling very, very cheap items? Sometimes we're talking about a $1 burger. Well, the answer is in quantity, like lots and lots of burgers that are sold daily. And since it's pretty cheap to make one burger to begin with, you can also offer limited items, such as extra special sauces for Christmas or holiday seasons, and sell many other specialties at very small prices. For example, fries are very cheap to make as well. Number 15. Don't try to get in the delivery wave. Sure, by now you're thinking, I'll just make money by delivering food, and since not a lot of fast food places make home deliveries, I'll be rich. Well, not so fast. Usually what happens with this type of food is it tends to get cold fast, and once it gets cold, it loses what made it so good in the first place. So it ends up being not so good for business, unless the delivery location is nearby and the total order price is more than around $25. That's why most restaurants choose not to do deliveries, as it's also bad for word-of-mouth marketing. And that's a wrap on the fast food industry, Alexers. Thanks for watching, and as always, we're curious. What type of fast food restaurant would you open if you had the opportunity? Let us know in the comments. Oh, still here, are you? Of course you are. Here's your bonus fact. Number 16. You can test your idea with a pop-up location. Ultimately, the success or failure of a business depends on the market and many factors that you can't always control. But that doesn't mean you have to leave it all up to chance, and what smart entrepreneurs do is test their idea first. And for fast food, a great test is setting up a pop-up location that's less expensive than leasing a space for a restaurant. Local markets, food trucks, and even some events are great places for this. You get a sense of how people react, how much you can sell, and you get some insight on what you need to do when you actually decide it's time for a storefront location. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.